Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Raise the Vibe with Liz. I'm your host, Liz Peterson, and today I have the lovely Lolita Walker joining me today. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go through her bio really quick for those of you who aren't familiar with her. So, certified life and executive coach, TEDx speaker, author, podcast host, retreat cultivator, and change champion for you, Lolita E. Walker is at the forefront of a movement that empowers women and teams to embrace their challenges and triumphs, act in their strength, and thrive in the greatest that drives individual greatness that drives individual and group ownership towards a renewed vision of excellence. She helps you to truly feel and trust the power within your paws. After nearly 20 years in corporate America, she founded Walker and Walker Enterprises, a personal and professional coaching and change consultancy. Her company, Walker and Walker Enterprises, creates intentional sacred spaces for individuals, corporations, agencies, and groups. Lolita is an expert at identifying then successfully navigating and sustaining both change and transition for herself and for others. Her coaching, speaking, courses, retreats, podcasts, and products leverage her proprietary strategies that continue to empower others to achieve results. Her book, The Intersection of You and Change, leads readers through 17 stops of challenging discovery. It shifts your mindset and current thinking of fear and confidence and chaos to clarity. According to one of her longtime clients, this book is Lolita's signature retreat in print. It is simply powerful. A natural extension of her portfolio is her podcast, Coaching Cocktails and Conversations, where she meets you where you are and coaches you up to where you need and deserve to be while having conversations around what she calls her virtual kitchen table. Lolita, welcome. Thank you so very much for having me, Liz. I am excited to be here. I'm excited to have you. We first met uh, Tina Shattuck's event on Vashon Island in 2019. And oh my gosh, when you stood up and spoke, you were amazing. You just invite empowerment. Thank you. So I received that. Thank you so much. It means a lot. And I love Tina. Our story of meeting is so amazing, actually. I didn't know Tina, but I knew Sarah. And Sarah introduced me to Tina. And all of a sudden, we had this amazing connection. And I actually was coming over to uh, do a book signing that Sarah had arranged and had the amazing opportunity to coordinate this in advance. So I'm glad that you were able to receive. Oh my gosh. And I'm so glad that you were able to join us. It really was amazing. I'm so glad you were in her area and doing the book signing and Sarah connected you with her. It was, it was really powerful. The whole day was really powerful. Today, we're going to be talking about the intersection of change in you, your book, and you also have a new book coming out, but I really want to dive into how life change can lead to personal power because Mm -hmm. I personally was going through life change when I met you. And Mm. there I was, like, I remember standing up in front of my group of peers and froze, Mm. right? And to, you know, go back and relive that. I've been reliving it this morning and, you know, that whole day and how beautiful it was, but also, you know, the challenges. So, you know, embracing that change and being able to empower yourself from that diversity, I think is a really important topic. So let's dive right into that, Lolita. I would love to. Yeah, let's talk about it. So have you read the book? I wonder which pieces have popped out at you as you did your own self-discovery. Oh my goodness. Gosh, it's so funny. You were funny. When you signed this, you like, read this. (laughs) You need to read this. I'm like, I will. I think I read it about six months to a year later. And a lot of the things um, that jump out at me, like Leaping Lane, Mm -hmm. You know, when you finally find the courage to like go out there and like take that leap, Mm -hmm. you know, and be courageous, you know, as Mm -hmm. you say. Yeah, so powerful. You know, I was also going through a lot of life change and shifts as well when I wrote the book. And as I came out of it or was coming out of it, it started with literally journaling. And everyone was coming to me uh, because it was during a time when people were losing their jobs and being laid off. And people were saying, Lolita, you're going through so much change at one time. How are you keeping it all together? And I was taking people through this process, but really I was journaling at the same time. And as I went back through my journal, I realized that these are the steps that I took 
These are literally the stops if we were aboard Lolita's change train. And why not take another power woman through this notion of discovery? And it's just so powerful. So I love to hear what really pops up uh, for women as they read this book. And then here's the juicy part of it all. There are men reading the book too, and there are couples that are reading the books just really to gauge conversation. And because of the soul work, you can see how it really engages you in some deep conversations with self and a partner, right? That's amazing. I know I read the little thing underneath, a woman's empowerment guide to lead to her unknown, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting there and thinking, this is really for everybody, yeah, you know, not just women. So yeah. that's so awesome to hear that everybody's diving into the book. It's really, yes, really it's a blessing. And yeah. when I asked the gentleman, the first gentleman that I found that came to me and said he had the book, he pulled it out and asked me to sign it. He, I asked him, I said, what made you get the book? He said, you know, I heard you speak. And if you could do this shift in women, I've, you got to be able to do this thing in me. Let me get the book. And it just was so powerful. And I said in that moment, you know, because he asked me, why did you write it to just women? This book is for everybody. And I said, you know, it's so interesting. I have a power passion for women being able to leap to their unknown of seeing a woman, seeing the greatness that's already inside of her and helping her to shift and then walk and talk a little bit differently. And that was so important to me. So that first book in my mind, I am a woman and I want to help somebody that's just like me to walk through this. But I'll tell you, as I shifted to my second book, Can We Talk? Letters and Poems to um, Reclaim a Bolder You. That one there has no limitations. It's open to everyone. And in fact, I have a Dear Black Boy poem that's inside of it as well. Yeah, but I love the. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't I don't second guess me doing it for women. Um, I'm really proud of that, but I'm so glad that other folks are being able to le leverage it too. That's awesome. I was also loving your TEDx talk. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank Amazing. You. And you, I love the term momentary interruptions. Yes. So yeah. you use that and what are they? So describe what is this momentary interruption and how we, how can we tap into these to move us forward? Uh, such a good question. Momentary interruptions are these are these pauses and shifts in life that happen throughout any change. It could be five minutes, five months, or five years, as I say in my TEDx talk. It is a moment that literally forces you to pause. It can be voluntary or you're being voluntold. Let's think about COVID. Let's think about this pandemic. We were voluntold that this was happening and how many momentary interruptions have happened where you are now able to shift to your most revolutionary self. So a momentary interruption in your life is one that forces you to pause, to reflect, and then to shift, right? Shifting is a choice. And whether it's this pandemic whether it is somebody saying something and something it's triggered in you, whether it's leaping lane, whether it is you going to a TEDx talk and really sitting and somebody really pouring into you like that moment counts. And so which momentary interruption in your life are you going to grab hold of and then leap? right? It is that change, that, that three terrains of change, that embrace, that act, and that thrive. And you can do that should you choose to receive and then be willing and ready to leave. That's awesome. And I love that term voluntold because so often it's not a volunteer choice, mm -hmm. right? We're in a circumstance where we just find ourselves there without yeah. choice, right? Yeah. And then we have mm -hmm. to act from there. It's so true, you know, in, in the TEDx talk, the one you were referring to, I talk about Nelson Mandela and I talk about how, you know, after his imprisonment, how he was elected the president, right? I talk about uh, Soledad O'Brien. I talk about me and my father's passing and whether it's a loved one or there's so many different momentary interruptions that happen in our lives. And if we really think we will ask ourselves, is this one right here? Like, is this one right here? And it could be. So what are you going to do out of this moment right here? You know, sometimes it lasts more than five minutes or five seconds. Sometimes this momentary interruption lasts years. Let's look at the pandemic. How long have we been in it so far? Yeah. 
And what are we doing as a result? Yeah. Right. What is it within us though, that pushes us forward? Because I've heard stories. I was at a retreat in 2018 in um, California and a man stood up and he told the story of he and his brother where mm-hmm. he chose personal development and the growth mindset and his brother mm-hmm. um, went down a different path. Mm-hmm. So what is it inside of us that we can tap into to move to that brings us forward? You know, super great question. I think that there is this willingness. I talked about that before, right? There is this awareness. I call it AWA, this awareness, right? This willingness and this action. Are you aware at what's happening, right? You have to be willing to receive you have to be willing to do the work. You can't force anybody. You know how people say you can lead a cow to water, but you can't make them drink. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. It's that thing. It's that thing. And it's now seeing differently. Imagine opening up your eyes to someone you've known for years. And now you see them in a peaceful place. Now you see them moving and shifting differently. They just are different. They speak differently. Things that used to bother them or you could get under their skin really quickly. It doesn't happen anymore they're at peace, right? They found their most be free space. And when you start to see that shift in others, you wonder like, oh, how can I get a piece of that, right? So this growth mindset, as we're thinking and we're moving and we're shifting into places and we're showing up in what we can control, then I think the difference is now that we've done our own work. We've said now is the time. We've gotten tired of complacency. We've gotten tired of wanting more and knowing that there's more. And we've said now is the time. And when you're ready, you two can shift. God, that's so true because there really is that space where you're kind of in it and you're stuck in it, Mm -hmm. right? And then you decide, okay, I don't want to feel this way anymore. I don't want to do it this way anymore. And it's, I describe it like when I started coming out of it as the springtime of my soul, right? Because it was like the sun came out one day and it was totally different and I was off. Yeah. Right. And I love what you say, the be free zone. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit more about that. Absolutely. You know, Be Free Boulevard is in my book. It's top three in my book. But this Be Free space I talk about all the time is if you close your eyes and you and you wonder where is it, where is it and what is around when I'm at my most Be Free space? That is this space where you're your most creative. It's where your shoulders can just go where you can smile without worry, where you are creating. Where is that space? And when I ask myself, where is that space for Lolita E. Walker? It is around water and trees. It can be in the midst of chaos. If you give me some trees or if you give me a sound of water, oh my gosh, I turn into, I can just plug out every single thing that's around me because that to me is my be free space. And when I'm there, I am my most creative. When I'm there, I'm writing poetry. When I'm there, I'm thinking the good things. I'm I'm moving into a realm that is really serving me, right? And my progression. And that's amazing. And when you know what that is, how can you get a piece of that every day? So, right, how can I, I can't be in Jamaica every single day. I could when I buy a property there. But in the meantime, in between time, what do I do? Well, I turn on spa radio because I want... For me, I know what it is about the water. It's not so much the sight, although that's amazing too, but it's more of the sounds. So for me, I can go to that place. For trees, I know that there's a slew of trees in my backyard, so I really can get grounded and go back there. Where are those places and spaces and finding time to place ourselves there is so good and it's so grounding. Mm, That's great. That really is true to just close your eyes and imagine the place that just brings you peace. Like yes. walking through the woods on a trail or you're at the beach and you're just sitting in the sunshine, listening to the waves. Yeah. Yeah. And imagine when you are really at the brink and you just are ready to cry and you might be crying. Imagine closing your eyes, breathing in deeply and releasing and placing yourself right there. It is this freeness that comes across you and it allows you to reset right? It allows you to reclaim a bolder you. You were always bold, but now you're reclaiming that piece of you so you can shift differently. And it's just so powerful and so amazing. And that's why I tell so many people that personal growth, really, personal growth equals professional success. 
when you realize who it is that you are, you show up differently. And that could also mean showing up professionally differently. So that's why coaching is so important inside of the workspace. And until we get to that place where organizations are really able to say, we need coaches sitting inside of here, then I think that we'll continue to struggle because we all go through so much, right? Right. I heard in a podcast, you really gained a lot of your skills in the corporate world to be able to coach. I love the corporate world. You know, for me, I believe I've been coaching forever and a day before I even was certified, you know, because in the corporate space, I think everybody should have to work in corporate for at least five years. But in the corporate space, I had the opportunity to um, manage people. I had the opportunity to make decisions. I had the opportunity to deal with so many different people, difficult people, nice people, um, and really figure out how can you maneuver so that people can receive what you're saying and then move to action and everyone doesn't receive the same. So those intense listening skills, that power questioning, all of those things and really being able to sit and receive are are facets of coaching. And the sugar on top, the cherry on top is really that certification in my estimation because it really helps you not be a fixer and wanna fix everybody. When you are in the corporate space, you are a fixer. It's like, get this thing done or under a timeline. When you're coaching, I'm not fixing. I'm allowing you to be your best self and literally asking you powerful questions and listening intently to help you get to where you already know you should be. I love that about you too, where you take out the fixing part and you really want to empower the person to be who they are and live from like their center and their personal PowerPoint, right? Absolutely. It's so important. You don't need me to fix you. You're not broken right? You might be at a place in this momentary interruption where you feel a little stuck. And that's why I'm good at what I do, because I'm able to meet you exactly where you are without judgment, right? And help you get there. Because when you take it step by step by step, it's amazing at what comes across. Can you walk us through those steps? You have the three terrains of change. Can yes. you go through those for our listeners? Yeah, Give absolutely. Them a little taste of you. Oh, I love it. They can get a little more detail in the TEDx talk to your point, but the three terrains of change are really all about eating change to nourish you. It's about embrace, act, and thrive, literally. Embrace where you are, no matter the circumstance. You are not your circumstance, absolutely not. You might be within a circumstance that you're not too happy about, but it doesn't define you. So this is all about embracing where you are, acknowledging where you are, being able to articulate it and say it and recognize that I'm standing right here, right? And there's work that goes into that. And then there's acting, acting in your strengths. And here's the part is that you have to know what your strengths are. And oftentimes we are not clear on what our strengths are because we don't talk about them. Sometimes we feel like it's egotistical or it's braggalicious or it's all of these things. And we we are running so much that we barely talk about ourselves and just recognizing that you got to act in your strengths. And first, you got to know what they are. Right. So you're embracing where you are. You're acting in your strengths. And now you're thriving in all of your greatness because you've already been through embrace and act. And you find yourself in these three terrains of change. And when you get there you've reached your most be free state. Nice. So how can people recognize when they need to embrace the state that they're in? Yeah. Um, when, when folks want to recognize that and they're ready, it's because of some of the things we talked about. It's because you feel that you're sitting in complacency. You feel like you're stuck in mud and you're not going anywhere. You feel like you're spinning and spinning and spinning. You're turning up and you're not excited. You're burned out. You want more. And you know that God did not place you on this earth to be miserable. You want more. You just don't know what that more is. That's when you know that it's time to embrace where you are. So it is, I am standing right here inside of this moment right now. Now, what am I going to do? Right. That's how you know that now is the time. That's how you know. So for me, when I leaped from corporate and I talk about this in my TEDx talk, too, is my manager talked to me about this amazing opportunity. And there were three words. No, thank you. Mm. And that set off for me what became me really walking into my be free space. Now, here's the thing. Was this scary? Yeah. Did I know what I was going to be doing next? 
No. Did I know that entrepreneurship was next? No. No one in my family was an entrepreneur, right? I didn't know what I didn't know, but what I did know is that there was more for me. And this opportunity wasn't exactly what was going to make me feel great. When I took a look at my pros, my cons, my situation, where my vision was, it wouldn't afford me those things. Would it have been still great money, new opportunities? Absolutely. But sometimes we have to make choices. And sometimes we it's, it's in the unknown, right? It's leaping to the unknown and not knowing where you're going to land, but recognizing that my faith and my strengths have wings to protect my fall. And I believe that. Nice. That's beautiful, Lolita. You were talking about your vision. So what are some steps that we can do to kind of formulate this vision to give ourselves a direction to go? Yeah, you know, I believe in, I have, according to Lolita E. Walker, 11 aspects of life. And we won't go through all of those there. I take my clients through them. I'm actually having a women's retreat in September and we go through each of those 11, but we'll start at the beginning, you know, spirituality and health um, is one. You know, um, there's some that's exploration. Where do you want to go? What do you envision? What is it that you want? And I love time bound visions. So a lot of people say you just should vision without any expectation. But for me, I love for it to be tangible and you can see the light, according to Lolita. So for me, for visioning is uh, by December 31st of 2022. When I get with the crew in September, for those women who choose to say, yes, I'm in, then we will be visioning for December 31st of 2023. And some of those questions that I ask as we go through those 11 and we talk about them and we journal about them and we see which one pops up. What are the, your top three? Let's talk about them. What are they? What do you see when you talk to your future self? What are you talking about? What feelings do you have? Let's, I mean, one exercise that we did was um, I want you to write as your future self and saying, thank you. I want to give thanks to who? Because I, right now I'm standing here in this moment, which is in the future. I want you to really feel that. And once you can feel that, then you know that and you trust that. And now we're going to get to that. And there's some work that happens within each of those. Nice, nice. So unraveling that even more and sort of diving into your book, The Intersection of You and Change, can you go through some of these really fun chapters to give kind of an overview of what you walk people through in your book? Yeah, I'm happy to. Yeah. Which one would you like to go through? Um, your favorites? Oh, you know, there is a, is it transition time? Like I have, to, I happen to have one here. I'm glad you, <laughs> I'm glad I have one here. Uh, I was taking somebody through that today. Okay. So I love the exercise on focus. I love, and it's a domino exercise. I'm not sure if you've done it, but um, I'm happy to take folks through that sure. really quickly. So each of the stops start with a poem of where we are. So FOCUS is the acronym FOCUS, F-O-C-U-S. And it says, FOCUS Freeway journeys through fear and will handcuff progression if you allow. Onboard your mind to an emphasis on what is required of you right now. Create your vision for what lies ahead. Assign a clear and manageable plan. Unthink self-limiting beliefs because the shift is right in your hands. Share where you are going and I'll see you atop the winner stand. Welcome to Focus Freeway. And then I talk about the stop a little bit. And as you can see in my own book, it's underlined and all types of stuff under there. So I can just, and I do it once a quarter, actually. Nice. Um, yeah, I do mine once a quarter. And so it just talks in general. I'm on page 45. You know, we want to operate in the clarity of now. We want to... Um, provide access to a highway of clarity and then move attention toward our goals. And sometimes there's dominoes that's crowding our space. So here I talk a little bit about my own journey and my own focus, and I create ways for you to create your own focus, your own fo focus fairway. And this exercise is with dominoes. So it has you to have dominoes, one, two, three, and four. And it just asks you for each domino, what is specifically needed for you? Let me go back a little bit. It starts with in the blank space of each domino, write four situations that are currently comp competing for your focus and in your mind are equally important. So without going through everything, what it does do is it tells you like, I have these four things in focus, 
right? That is crowding my space. They're, they're all priority number one. You might have 10, but I ask you to take a look at four. And of those four, let's write them down and what's, let's think about what exactly is needed from you in these. And as we go in and you do this exercise and you follow the work, it helps you to reprioritize what it is and for you to understand why you decided to make that shift, right? It says, occasionally we find ourselves holding onto dominoes simply because we want to maintain control. It is definitely difficult to let go of control. And I talked to you about challenging yourself and some things to really think about and giving yourself permission to focus and uncuff both yourself and your progression, because that's what we're really doing, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's so important to kind of break it down and realize like, what am I focusing on? What's taking all of my energy? Where am I? Where's my input going? Right. Yeah. I had a um, post it up on my mirror for months before I moved it to this new place. I just finished moving on the uh, 31st and it was focus. And it was just to bring myself back to, okay, what am I focusing on? But what do I really need to be focusing on? Because you can have like four to six tabs open in your brain that has nothing to do with what you're supposed to be doing. Right. And to just refocus on that yeah. is so important. Absolutely. I totally agree. You know, I always talk about clarity plus confidence equals the commitment of how you show up. The more clear we can become, the more focused we can become. It really helps us to increase our confidence and walk with a renewed step, right? A renewed intention. And that's your commitment of showing up every single day. And when I say showing up, I mean, who is Liz Peterson? Who is Lolita E. Walker? How do I want to be remembered? And how do I want to show up when I walk in the room? What do I want people to say about me? And am I showing up in that way? And if the answer is no, then let's get to it and fix it, right? What about women who don't feel like they have that confidence? Because you're oozing confidence, Lolita. When you get up stage, you on stage, you are confident. Oh, thank you. You are very confident. So for those ladies who are sitting by going, oh, I'm not there yet. I'm not really feeling yeah. my personal power right now. What advice would you give them to be able to step fully into that confidence space? Yeah, I work with a lot of clients who are in that space. And I understand the world is moving and there's so much judgment out in the world, quite frankly, right? I get it. And what I say to that woman is, hey, at the core of you, who are you? At the core of you, before you were a mom, before you were a wife, before you were all of, da, 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 all of these labels, then talk to me about who you are or who you believe you were, right? What aspects of that do you want back? Is there any of that? Some people say, absolutely not. I don't want any of that. But most times people say, oh, if I had time, I would do this. I wanna talk about your strengths that you see. And quite honestly, what we talked about earlier is quite honestly, people aren't able to articulate their strengths. So what we do is we began creating that renewed confidence. Because when I talk to you about who does Liz Peterson want to be, right? What are people going to say about you when you're no longer here? We can work ourselves backward to really starting with the foundation of you. And that is the premise of all of our work. So the more and more work we do together, the more and more you show up, the more and more you tell me your goals, the more and more we focus on our coaching calls, the more and more we speak to each other is the more and more you get poured into. And is the more and more that you show up in the renewed and bolder you that you are destined to be. You're already there. It's just clearing out some of the cobwebs that just happen to be inside of you right now, unlocking a new crevices that you didn't even know existed. I'll tell you, I am on the social audio app and I wrote poetry when I was younger and I, I stopped when I went to college and just life happened. And I'll tell you that when I got back on this social audio app, I started going into rooms and heard all this poetry and it just sparked something in me. It was amazing. Now I have 44 letters and poems. And it's because something gets sparked in you. You get this creative notion. You start to listen to people. You start to write and jot. You start to allow yourself this renewed thing, like this passion just came out of me. And then I started showing up and I started speaking in poetry rooms. The first time I did, I was so nervous because these people are so good, so nervous. And now I'm in there all the time. Absolutely. Now I'm recording an audio book, right? Wow. That is the power of surrounding yourself with people that possess these things that you want to invigorate out of you and to going into new spaces where you don't even know if you want to do anything, but you're just interested. Explore the endless possibilities that are you. 
right? Explore them, see what's out there in the world. Life is too short. See what's out there. God, that's amazing. It found, sounds like you stumbled into something great. Yes. There. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's can't powerful. Wait to them. That is yeah. Powerful. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Coming out this month. So by the end of this month, fingers crossed, but we shall have a book and I'm so excited. Mm-hmm. Nice. Tell us all about it. Yeah. It's called, can we talk? Letters and Poems to Reclaim a Bolder You. And I'll tell you, the foreword was written by Damon Jones. And I remember he said to me, he said, Lolita, I don't have words. This thing tapped into me in a way, I just don't have words. And as I hear people talk to me about them, what it does is it really grabs the innermost part of you. It is you talking to that innermost part of you. And I meet you where you are. And as he described it, is it is a compilation of art. Like you are an artist. And, and to be to sit with yourself and, and know that your words have power is so amazing. So I'll be talking to dear anxiousness, dear ancestors, dear black girl, dear contagious vulnerability, dear divorce, right? Dear wow. fear, all of these notions and these emotions and these right nows, these things that we all go through. And I'll be talking to each of them, dear daddy, my dad passed away and I'll be talking to, you know, a lost loved one. Where are all dear healing, all of these places. It's amazing. I love it. Gosh, that sounds beautiful. I can't wait to read it. I have, I have chills. Oh, thank you so much. Talking about it. Mm -hmm. It's so powerful. Yeah. And to be able to tap into all of those different things, you know, dear this, Dear that and really like what how is that speaking to you and how can you bring that out of yourself and I know you're just going to encourage people to tap into those places yeah themselves. yeah it um you know how did I bring it out of me um you know I don't start with the title I start with a feeling that I have inside I start with Uh, listening to conversations and hearing people and pulling from that place that I hear. You know, the Dear Contagious Vulnerability, true story actually, Dear Contagious Vulnerability is because I help to facilitate a room every Friday at four o'clock with this amazing woman named Kate Creer, and she's a vulnerability doula. And she, um, in her room, there were all of these people talking, just she asked one question, what's on your heart? And the room just explodes. And it's just what's on your heart in this moment. And in that room that day, I wrote Dear Contagious Vulnerability, literally. I wrote it because the the feeling and emotion was right there. And it's so powerful. And at the end of that room, I was like, hey, you guys, I wrote a poem just about what I felt in this energy that was in this room. And it made it to the book. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's great. So it doesn't have to be always about me. It is this place that I'll meet you. And we've all known somebody who's been through a divorce. We've all known someone who's lost a loved one. We all known someone who's faced shame and who had joy in their life. Like it's celebrating all of those things. You know, there's one called Dear Angry Black Woman, because I'm so tired of the labels that are put on to African-American women, particularly in the workplace. And I forgot what conversation I was in at the time. And somebody said, she's an angry black woman. And I said, you know what? There's a poem for this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that started off with the, a notion of this label and it, and it manifested from there. But some of them like Dear Forgotten Me, I didn't have a title for that. I didn't have a title for that one until I recorded it. And I'm sitting there with the um with the the engineer, the audio engineer. And I'm like, ah, oh, I recorded it. I'm like, oh, dear forgotten me. He's like, yes. So it was just kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, that's a great yeah. title too. Do you have a little snippet that you can read for us? Oh yeah, sure, 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 sure. I'm happy to. Too. Which one spoke to you? Let me pull it up. Which one would you like to hear? About of all the ones I just made. Dear Forgotten Me. Okay. Yeah, that sounds I'm great. pulling it up now. Yeah. Look at you getting some juiciness before the book publishes. <laughs> yeah. It's pulling up now. Smart. All right. Let's do, let's find Dear Forgotten Me. 
All right, look at you getting some getting some advanced <laughs> stuff. I know I've got you here. Exactly. All right. So this one goes, dear forgotten me. Can we talk? Let's walk into this forest together. I want to navigate differently. I want to remember you. I want to remember her, him, we, me. Somehow I got lost in the domination of this forest, but I still have yet to see the trees. I want to remember you. I want to remember emotion. I want to feel. I want to feel your motions and hear your sounds, those from the water that tap and flow and glow into the wells that run so deep. Those from nature that whisk a cool breeze to freeze the moments that we spent together. Those from me, those from you, those that we weathered the storm together through and through. I want to hug the redwood that is firmly planted into the earth. So let's unearth the essence of you. Are you ready to uncover what you think has been forgotten? You are not forgotten. I see you. I remember the drums as they beat and as they picked up speed and slowed down with the resonance of your voice that hoists me higher and speaks so clearly and loudly without you even saying a word. Dear forgotten me, let's move forward. I see the colors of the leaves that form the seats to catch me when I fall. You did not fall because I remember you. I can't think backward and won't dare to consider in reverse because, oh dear forgotten me, you have threatened to erase my memories that hang on the cliffs of fear and joy and happiness and pain and, oh dear forgotten me. What if the outpouring of you were the emotions that were pinned up inside of you simply waiting to let the sun shine through? What if I were the right moment to unveil you and then weave itself upon itself in the rails of expression by interlacing threads and strips and moments upon itself, dear forgotten me. The words of expression want to touch you through a vibration and it is so powerful. Are you willing to receive? Dear forgotten me, can you feel it? You are invited to come with me, explore with me, transform with me. And as we run through the forest and court this new free, so let's finally grab that close up with these trees. Smile. You are permitted to come closer and follow the streams that flow so amazingly and weave into the veins, the vessels of blood that go into my heart. So close your eyes and listen to these sounds. They go ding, ding, ding. Ding goes the healing and the sound of the bell that rings so effortlessly. To remember the lives that were taken, mistaken, now has me breaking my silence, which has been covering me for way too long. I want to be surrounded by your release at the right time and the right moment in the melancholy of music that has hints and bursts of shimmering lights. They are hints of purples and reds and blues and yellows. Dear forgotten me, can you imagine it? And then there's more and more and more, but I can't tell you guys all of it because you got to get the book. But at the end, it just, everything <laughs> ends with Dear Forgotten Me. Can we talk? This is to you for me. I love you, Lolita. That's beautiful. Thank you. There's a little bit more, but yeah, you get a feel for it. I mean, how did you feel from listening to it? <sighs> Empowered, smiling, but it's more of an experience of having you read it to me and having your feelings come through to me is where the real feeling like lies. So I'm interested to see like when I go to read it, how am I going to interpret it from how I'm reading it as opposed to what I heard you read to me, right? Like when we have the book in our hands or if we're listening to your audio version. Yeah. Right? How is that going to be different? Right. Yeah. You know, sometimes when we hear when we hear people, we hear tone and it leads us to think a different way. So I love that you asked that because I'm I'm eager to find out as well. Yeah, That's it's gonna awesome. be amazing. People hear me say I, I read my poems all the time and you know, people hear me and they want to hear this audio, hence why I will have audio. It won't come out with the book directly, but it will come out a little later. And it is going to be very interesting that if you have the book first 
and then you listen to it while you have the book, what different feelings did you have, right? Yeah. You know, so good. And you really do have that poetic performance way of expressing your poem, reading your poem. Uh, I, I feel you. Thank it so, you much. so much. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much I feel it so much that sometimes I get lost in it. I get lost in the poem. And sometimes after I write a poem, I'll go read it. I'm like, oh my gosh, how did it get so long? It's because I get lost in it. I was asked to come in to do a, uh, there's this poetry program that's happening. And the, the prompt is in dedication of Maya Angelou. And I love it. It's on February 20th. And so everybody will be reading from that prompt. And it's going to be so amazing to hear how different people pull and how it's, it's going to be great. And as I was listen, as I was thinking about it, I haven't written it yet. I wrote to the organizer and I said, hey, how long are these poems? You know, sometimes people say two minutes, five minutes, whatever. Uh-huh. I said, how long are these poems? And she said, oh, it's not an open mic. Just do you and be free with it. And I said, oh, I don't know when people tell me that sometimes I get so lost in it. I'm like, geez, five minutes later, I'm still, I mean, when you read it, it's five minutes. That's <laughs> right. Five. Yeah. That's so we'll, going to be fantastic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is gonna be, yeah. When is that coming up? Um, February 20th. Actually, are you on Clubhouse? The app Clubhouse? Um, no, but I think I need to be. I've yeah. heard it dropped a couple times. So, yeah. I would love for you to. And it's February 20th and it's called Flowetry Poetry Vibes. And if you follow me on Clubhouse, which is a free social app, then whenever I pop up, if you put a little bell by my name, you'll see the rooms that I'm in. And so on the 20th of February, I think at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, you'll get to hear, yeah, invite your listeners. I love it. All right, everybody. Clubhouse, February 20th, Flowetry Poetry House. Yeah. Follow Lolita so you can... I think it's called vibes. It's a reminder. What is it called? Vibes? Yeah, it's called Flowetry Poetry Vibes. I'm trying to find out. But it'll be, you can follow me. But you, if you put Flowetry Poetry, you'll find there too. You'll find that Got too. Got it. Awesome. Mm-hmm. I'm 7 so excited. p.m. Eastern time. No pressure. <laughs> that was fantastic. Thank you. I want, to be- read a, I want to read a quote by you. Okay. It's up to us to choose if and how this thread will weave into our lives. Yeah. So talk a little bit about how we can weave this thread into our lives after we experience diversity. Yeah. You know, diversity, talk to me more after we experience diversity of what? Diversity of thought, diversity of people, diversity experience. of experience. After oh. we've experienced this thing that's made us take the pause. Oh, got you, got you, got you. How do you weave it in? You know, it's interesting. You weave it in one thread at a time. We take small chunks in order to make things a habit inside of our lives. You don't just change all at once because that's why people stop the gym in February, right? If they're no longer trying to get in the gym from January to February, it's this thing that you weave. It's a choice for you to weave this into the fabric of your everyday life, right? So you want to make a change. Let's say you pause and you're like, you know what? This poetry thing is really helping me release all of this stuff inside of me. And I just don't have time to write, but I love how it feels. Well, let's see. Can you start with writing for 10 minutes once a week? Can you? Okay. And especially if you're on Clubhouse, it's like, can you go into a poetry room one day a week? There's tons of them. Yeah, you can. And write. There's a picture prompt room I could tell you about. And you it's silent. You see a picture and you literally just write to the prompts for three minutes or seven minutes and then you get off after you read it. So my point is that there are opportunities to weave what it is that makes you your most be free into your day. Remember, I told you that I'm a fan of water and trees is like my jam. It is my thing. And how do I get a piece of that in my calm moments? Well, I'll tell you, I get a piece of that by when chaos is happening. Let's say even when I'm on a Zoom call, right? I'll turn off my camera and I'll literally... And I'll place myself there. I will. And when you breathe into that place, because you're really grounded in that place, because you know how it makes you feel, life shifts. And you can come back renewed. That short grounding is amazing. But you have to first be aware. You have to be willing. And you have to be take action. It's AWA. 
Yeah, I believe in everything I talk about because I practice it. <laughs> yes, and it shows. It shows. Thank you. Thank you. What if we were bumping into these limiting beliefs, you know, those little voices inside our heads are like, oh, you can't do that. You can't do this. You're strong, not strong enough for this, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're going to come. <laughs> so the first thing is being aware, right? I have to know for sure without a shadow of a doubt that doubt, fear, anxiety, those voices will come. But here's the key. What are you going to do then? Right? So one is become aware. Two, I'm going to go back to being willing to make a change and then acting in your strengths that we talked about earlier. It is a circle because we, you know, a circle is never ending. A circle is never ending. We can choose to stop at a place inside of the circle. We could choose to break the circle. We could choose to open it up, but it will always be a circle. And so what I say to that is when those limiting beliefs come, you have to ask yourself, what about them is true? I want to challenge the norm. I was happy. Now I'm in my strengths because I know I've demonstrated them. Is this limiting belief that I've been telling myself real? Is it true? Ask yourself, is it true? So what, what's limiting me? Is it you're not good enough, right? You don't deserve to get that promotion. Oh my God, people are going to judge you. Okay, am I really not good enough to deserve this promotion? Am I really not? Because for some reason I'm getting it. What did they see in me? What do I see in me? And if you don't know, then ask them. Ask. Right. Sometimes we don't ask the questions. And when you can begin to challenge the norm, when you can begin to challenge the limiting beliefs, then you find yourself standing in positivity because you're aware of the truth and you're aware that that's a lie. So you keep moving. Right. Right. It sounds easy, but that's why there are coaches. That's why I'm there is to be certified to be able to take people through it, because if it were easy, we wouldn't need people like me. But I will tell you that there is some work that we should each be doing ourselves. And one of them is to your question, challenging the limiting beliefs that come our way. They come to me, too. They come to me, too. Right. Yeah. I'm not a, a poet, poet for years and years and years. Right. But I have a book of poetry coming out. Why? Because I know my words have power. Why? Someone had to tell me, true story, true story. I was writing my poetry. You know, I've, I've had a book before and everything is, is paragraph form, right? So mm -hmm. I started talking to this amazing poet. His name is Tariq Sankofa. I have to tell him I mentioned him on here. And I um, hired him to work with me because I think he's so dynamic and I wanted him to read some of my poems that I had. He had heard me say poems before. <laughs> and I remember the first thing that he said to me, he'll probably kill me. The first thing that he said to me was, first of all, I can't read it. Like why, why are these paragraphs? What was happening here? I'm mm. like, really? He's like, no. Have you not read a poetry book? And I was like, well, I have, but well, write poetry so that your reader can, you can take your reader on a journey. And I have to realize that I do take people on a journey with my words, but I want them to be able to receive. Remember, we talked about that too. And so for people to be able to receive in these small buckets, you got to give it to them small because Lolita, you are, you are grabbing all of them and you're making them vulnerable. You're, you're, they're seated right here and you're saying, hey, I see you. So manage it in small chunks. The same stuff you say is the same stuff the reader needs to feel. And sometimes you need that accountability. And so I credit him for saying that to me. Um, why, why are these in paragraphs? I can't even read it. And he helped me to be able to chunk out the thoughts. He's like, put an enter right there. Say it again. Where does the enter go? And it was just amazing. And I think that sometimes we have to find people in their genius and be able to ask them for the help and hire them for the help that you need to get you to a new place. And I am very renewed in my poetry and confident, right? So driving clarity on why he wasn't receiving it, increased my confidence, right, of showing up as a poet. And now I'm committed to walking and talking differently. That equation for success is real. And I, and, I, and I always tell people, according to Lolita E. Walker, the, the equation for success, no matter where you are in life, is clarity plus confidence equals the commitment of how you show up. Wow. That's powerful. How did you come upon that, though? With the equation? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, because I believe it. You know, I talk about clarity all the time. And if clarity is where we start, it has to increase your confidence. So as I started talking to people more and more, 
I start to know what I'm saying and what I'm doing and how people are receiving it and how people are shifting. So I know that when I help people drill down with my processes, with my systems, with everything, and they get really clear, their confidence, I'm like, who are you? Hey, 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 I didn't know you were here. Let's chat. Welcome. Welcome outside of you, right? And then you're now recommitted because you're not going to go back to where you were before because you know now how this feels. And now you've located your most be free. That's big. Just want to kind of sit. Yeah, like amazing. Like no, I hope you walked away with stuff. I know I feel, sometimes I can feel energy within me. And so I know that we have left amazingness with all of your listeners. I've mentioned two people here that I have to forward the podcast to, which yeah. is Kate Greer and um, um, Tariq, Tariq Sankofa. So I'll make sure I do that as well. Awesome. Is there anything that we haven't tapped on that you would like to discuss today, Louis? Oh, no, and Damon Jones. I forgot to talk about him too. Got to make sure yeah. <laughs> yeah. to talk about. Uh, no, you know, I have a women's weekend renewal retreat coming up this September. I have it every September. I used to do it twice a year, then the pandemic came. So I do one virtual and one in person, September 15th through the 18th. It's going to be amazing in West Virginia for all inclusive days of nothing but me pouring into you with some amazing um, other folks that are there, you show up and I'll take care of the rest. The chef, all types of juiciness. You don't have to do anything. Um, my book, just talked about it. My goal for this book, one of my many goals for this book is to become a best-selling author. So I would love for you guys to make sure you buy in the first 24 hours and we will get to, we will get to impacting lives one journey at a time. Sweet. Thank you. And people can reach you at lolitawalker.com. Yes, absolutely. Also in, on Instagram at Hey Coach Walker. <laughs> I love that. But you can reach me at all the places. You can get to everything, including LinkedIn, Twitter, et cetera, right from um, lolitawalker.com. Sweet. All right. And if, what is one little juicy pearl of wisdom you would like to leave our listeners with today? Oh my goodness. I write a 40 deck card of affirmations and my favorite affirmation that I say over and over again. So if you follow me and you're listening, you already know about heart is that I am the greatness that others have yet to see. And sometimes that includes me. Oh, yay! Are your cards. I have them right over there on my kitchen counter. There. I change them all the time. I love that. Yay. Thank you. Yes. Oh. That one was, I am open to endless possibilities. Yes, and sometimes we have to remind ourselves of who we are and how we want to walk in intention, right? It's clarity. It increases your confidence and it drives your commitment to how you show up. Woo, yes. Yeah, it's the equation for success, I'm trying to tell you. Lolita, you've been amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. This has been so awesome. Thank you for having me. It's been great to have you. Thank you for all your wisdom. All right. Yes. And you got to let Tina know that we connected and we will make sure that the women who hold the key listen in because what a powerful episode. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. Thanks, Lolita. Everybody look up Lolita, lolitawalker.com. Lolita, thank you so much for joining me. And thank you everyone for listening. I'm Liz Peterson. This is Raise the Vibe with Liz. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Raise the Vibe with Liz and join my newsletter at lizeshealingtouch.com. Thanks everybody. And remember to get out there and raise the vibe. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.